Hi, good afternoon. Daniel Thomas here again from the Love March Movement. You know, we're fasting every single week, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single Wednesday, that is. And we are dedicated to raising up an army of intercessors that will storm the throne of God and pray for our nation. Because guess what? Prayer changes things. That is important. We understand this is a spiritual battle that we are in. That we, we are really standing up for sexual purity and the protection of the family. Check out our mission and vision statement in our Facebook room. We, we understand that this is not just an advocacy um, advocacy thing that we are doing. We understand that it is also a very spiritual, a spiritual situation that we are in. And so we are dedicated to fasting and prayer. Please join us every single Wednesday. Thanks for checking this video out, right? All right, so every Wednesday, this is what we fast for three points and three people. If you didn't know, you see me straight. So the three points, we're going to jump right into it right now. The first point is guess what? The Love March is coming up on, the, on September the 14th. I don't even know if you knew it, that. You see me? September 14th is Love March 2013 for sexual purity. Right? I really want to pray, pray about this because it's a very huge event. It's a national event. Um, just, just, you know, a very powerful stance for sexual purity in this nation. And you want to pray that all the persons that come to the march, that they would have a heart that is set on God, right? Loving him and loving people. Very, 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 very important, right? Because we're not there to bash people or cuss people or nothing like that. We are there to stand in love, right? For what God wants us to stand for, right? And we also want to pray that those that come would come in a, with a heart of prayer. Yes, it's a powerful stance and, you know, there's some level of hype to it. But it's really a prayer march. It's really a prayer a prayer march through the city, right? From Hope Gardens to Mandela Park. So we want persons that would be praying and not joking out this thing because we understand that this is spiritual war, 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 right? So, you know, we're dedicated to praying. I want persons that will come and understand the vision, right? We're standing in love for all persons because Christ died for all persons, even me, Christ died for. And you know, said me, don't do the blood of Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ died for me and everyone that is yet to be free from sin, Right? Yet to be free and free died for us all. So we need to extend that same kind of love. So we really want everyone that comes to the event to really have that same heart of love. Romans 12 verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. You see me straight. Right. So that's the first point. The second point that we're going to be praying for something very, very, very interesting and alarming has taken place in England, right? The millionaire gay couple, there's a millionaire gay couple, um, Druid Barlow's, right? Both of them, you know, they bought their last name. You know, there's some level of confusion there. Not sure, you know, what to call each person. But so life go. But they've con they've confirmed that they are launching a legal challenge, um, a challenge to the churches in England that have opted out of hosting gay weddings. Now, we know the local lobby group in Jamaica has been saying, nobody is going to trouble the churches, you know, the churches will be safe. All this nonsense about freedom of speech that you are creating all this, this noise about really amounts to nothing. But guess what? As was predicted, as we said before, the church is implicated in this gay agenda. The, ch the, the church in England is being attacked and obviously would not just be, limit be limited to, to England, right? You know, so these two guys, this, this gay couple is challenging, is suing the church in England saying that they want the right to, to get married in the church that they attend to. Apparently they go to this particular church and they're saying that the leaders of the church, you know, are are against it, even though the church is really welcoming to them and stuff. You know, we believe in, in being welcoming to persons and letting them know that we care about them, right? That's very important. We care about them because, I mean, the church is for sick people. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, right? Yeah, but we're not affirming sin. We never affirm sin, no matter how much people like it, no matter how much people think they are it. We are never affirming sin because sin kills, right? But yeah, these guys are suing the church in England. Now, we, we, you know, what we want to pray about, we want to pray for our local churches in Jamaica because we do not want the situation to go that far. 
and I mean this is not this is not you know this is this is a straight up it's happening in England our highest court guess where that is it is in England the Privy Council so we already have ties to England significant ties and uh, we want to pray that our church that we would be wise that we would understand what is happening in other nations and make wise decisions that 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 keep the bubble law because guess what if the bubble law is removed there will be nothing to stop the full out enforcement of homosexuality on our nation on our schools and our churches especially two institutions that are very dear to our hearts schools because they tend to children and the church because we stand for a certain amount of values and we have the right to believe what we believe and that should be protected by the government as it stands now there is a freedom of religion but guess what that freedom of religion and freedom of conscience is being lost in many many nations latest one even the one we're talking about right now is england right so let's let's be praying that our our churches in jamaica the leaders of our churches would stand in unity and that we would speak up and really really speak with one voice to say let us keep the burglar and protect our freedom of speech protect our freedom of speech you see me because we have the right to speech it we have to speech it you see it all right cool the third thing we want to pray about this week third the third thing we want to pray about this week i'm gonna check this paper right now oh that was the third thing well done well the first <laughs> The first thing was a love match 2012 that you know we would share the, the same heart and vision concerning love and the prayer, especially the foundations of the love marriage movement, love and prayer, and the truth as well. The, the second thing we want to pray about is for the protection of our children from the IPPF. Did I already talk about the IPPF? I don't think I spoke about the IPPF yet. So, guess what? I'm going to speak about the IPPF now. It's the third point is the IPPF. Now, the IPPF is the International Planned Parenthood Federation, right? And they have specific plans. Man, I'm going hard with these three points, so it's like one, three, two, you see me? You see the pump fake on that one, you see me? Straight. All right, so the IPPF, guess what? This group, um, they have a very interesting manifesto, um, their, their youth manifesto written in 1998. Has some very important stuff and you know this is these are one of the things that one one of the stuff that we're marching for um at our our love march because we are saying we want to protect the nation from these things now interestingly and importantly they they consider when they when every time you hear the word young people are talking about 10 11 12 34 you know up to 24 right so 10 to 24 year olds and they have specific goals for the world Right now, now listen closely. Um, all young people must be able to choose from a full range of contraceptives, including the latest advances in contraception, sexual and reproductive health services for young people must include. Now, this is what they are saying they want to see in nations all over the world, which happens to include Jamaica. Guess what it says? Um, these health services, sexual and reproductive health services for young people must be one confidential remember 10 year olds they're saying they want 10 year olds to be able to get sexual and reproductive health services confidentially they want them to be accessible to 10 year olds and freedom from judgment and they want to allow they're saying that their vision that they're working hard towards is that they want all 10 year olds across the world and across jamaica to have access to a complete range of sexual and reproductive health services sexual and reproductive health services for a 10 year old they want it to be confidential that means that they want the right they want children to be able to say they want to exclude their parents from any discussion in these um, particular areas furthermore um you know, they're saying sexual and reproductive health education must be accurate, reliable, and responsive to the physical and emotional needs of young people of all ages, even 10-year-olds, and sexual lifestyles. So it doesn't matter what the quote-unquote sexual lifestyle this 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old is, or 14-year-old up to 24, right? They're saying their vision, their goal, and they're working towards is that they want to see no matter what the age of this quote-unquote young person 
or the sexual lifestyle that they get a full, accurate, responsive, reliable uh, amount of sexual and reproductive health education, the full. Right? And also, society must recognize the right of all young people to enjoy sex. Remember when they say young people again, you mean 10 to 14 year olds. They are saying society must recognize the right of my 10 year old cousin to enjoy sex and to express his sexuality in a way that he chooses. They say 10 year olds, you know, should have the right to enjoy sex. What they're actually saying, and this is how lobbying play, plays out from this goal that they have, is that their goal is to get the age of consent down to 10 across the world. Now, we know in our local, our local um, our, on the local level in Jamaica, the Ministry of Health late last year said that you know their their plans to get our age of consent down to 14 right so yeah understand there are some things that we need to pray about we need to pray people now understand the prayer is very important right we cannot allow the age of consent to go down to 14 much less 10 either so we need to pray against these things there's a very important clause in our anthem right it says keep us free from evil powers right these people have money they have vision right many of them have charisma in their leadership style or whatever it is but we just have a we just have a prayer because and, and do what we can as well but prayer is is going to see it in the spiritual the stance against this demonic aggressive destructive agenda that wants to get our 10 year olds to be able to have sex and and you know speak to to to, to counselors and get sexual and reproductive health education with without any input at all from the parents 10 year old so we need to pray for the protection of our children in jamaica and the protection of the laws that are in place the the the, the, the um age of consent it actually should go go back up to 18 because guess what a 16 year old cannot legally work in jamaica but a 16 year old in jamaica can have sex legally seriously what kind of message is that sending that message is definitely playing out in terms of use them on the street teenage pregnancy and stuff like that you know we need we, there needs to be thinking behind these laws so you know we really want to pray for the protection of our children and that's one thing that we're marching on september 14 the protection of our children from sexual exposure right you know pray for those 10 year olds please right so those are all three things the first one love march 2013 september 14 we're praying that everyone that comes that day would be you know have that one heart one vision like that heart of love and prayer second thing i want to pray about is that our church will arise in unity and speak to keeping the bogey law which is very important for the protection of our freedom of speech conscience religion or whatever freedom of speech or whatever and third thing i want to pray for the protection of our children from this demonic agenda that wants to give them the right a 10 year old the right to have sex and do whatever he wants with his body, freedom of sexual expression and everything, um, without any input at all from his parents, right? Sounds like chaos to me, the fruit of the atheistic lifestyle and mindset. Right, so three people that want to pray for this week. Yo, long time, we're going to pray for Javed, and guess what? We're going to pray for Javed this week. Yo, what are Javed Jagai, Zine? First person is Javed Jagai. We would like to see Javed Jagai. Come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Leave the gay lifestyle because it is killing him. I am sure it is killing him. And, and that's rough because that means that, you know, my brethren, Javed, could, could really be in danger. But there is danger from punishment in hell. We don't want, we don't want my brethren, Javed, experience that at all. You see me? So we really want to pray for Javed that, you know, he would... He would experience life in Jesus Christ, right? Secondly, we want to pray for Dean Lewis, leader of J Flag right now. J Flag are going bad every minute here, but J Flag has said something in you know, the news. Um, we'll just pray for him, you know, he will also come to know Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And, you know, really care about these people from the heart, from my heart, from my heart, you see me? Third thing, we want to pray, we want to pray for, um, I want to pray for Clive Forrester. He's a really hardcore virgin, yo. Really, bless up.